Hello everyone, welcome, and my name is Yellen, and this is going to be a, uh, a quick tutorial on how to do uh, fashion sketches using markers and a few other materials. So let's get started. Um, I would like to talk about um, some supplies and materials that I'll be using in this tutorial. Uh, first of all, since we're going to be using markers, um, we are going to be using also a marker pad. And this is one that I recommend. Uh, here is the brand name. Uh, as you can see, Bowden Riley. Uh, you want to make sure that you are purchasing uh, the type that says marker paper. Uh, they have a few different uh, kinds. And <clears throat> This one is great because um, if you look inside, this page is, I would say, pretty much uh, double-sided. But that, what I mean by that is, it's you can either work on this side or work on the back side. Unlike other um, market brands, there's only one good side, and if you just happen to work on the back side, the wrong side, more like, uh, you just end up with quite a bit of mess. So with this brand, you can't go wrong. What I really like to do, what I usually like to do is to just take out a sheet, tear it off, and I'm gonna close my marker pad. And I like using the back of the marker pad because if you look, the front has a bit of a graphics going on, and since the marker paper is somewhat translucent, it's a bit distracting. So I usually use the back of it and like this <coughs> and we're ready to go now for the materials that I will be using uh, there are several first of all we have the uh, Copic markers these are probably uh, one of the best brands out there uh, they're very consistent uh, they're refillable and reliable and you know, they last for a long time. So, and you, they come in all sorts of different colors and I have a limited edition here, uh, limited color palette. And this is pretty much all I need. And if you're interested in um, what colors I use, um, you can always contact um, the magazine um, and you know, we can get some more information on that as well. <coughs> all right, so again, uh, just one quick note though, uh, these markers that I'm using, they are, if you notice, they are oval shaped body. Here's the top view. And this is kind of a newer design. And one tip has a nice little brush tip, and the other has a nice little chisel tip. So both come in, come, uh, in quite handy. And I also will be using these Tombow pens and they look like this. They're pretty nice. They're not refillable, but um, if you want doing like a quick lay-in, it's really nice to have you know something like this. Again, this has a little nice brush tip, and there's a nice little <clears throat> pointy tip to do some um, light sketching as well. All right, so I'm going to put this away really quick, <coughs> and. Let's see, I'm going to use this little nicer, darker version of this Tombow. And I'm going to use this little pointy tip over here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And when I start sketching, in the very beginning, what I usually do is, um, you know, to get myself warmed up, I would do a little quick, like literally a few seconds uh, long sketches just to get the gesture um, right and get the flow going. So for example, you know, don't think about it too much. Just, you know, let it go and do some quick little sketches like these. Something like this. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And I'm going to do maybe a few more. Maybe something a little straighter.
and maybe something let's see So stuff like this. And what I usually do next is to get a gray marker like this out, which has a nice chisel tip like this that will cover up an area pretty fast. And you know, just throw in some volume. Again, at this point, you do not have to be very accurate and too precious about this. In fact, you should not get too precious with your sketches. You've got to be able to abandon these sketches at any time. It's probably one of the most common mistakes that people would make. Um, that they get too quickly into doing some details. And before you know it, you're um, just noodling. And instead of thinking about the overall, the big picture, we should say. So this is what I call the uh, uh, little quick skeletal sketches, just to get the pose going and the volume going, and just to make sure that you know we have enough attitude in the poses as well. And, and you can take this and you know apply some clothing on top and use this as a nice base. Um, so let's say we uh, like this first one. What I can do next is basically, let's see, let's slide this over a little bit. And now I can go ahead and draw with uh, a number of different um, types of pens. I um, sometimes like to draw with a ballpoint pen. Uh, sometimes I draw and sketch with the uh, this Sharpie um, ultra fine tip. Sometimes brown, sometimes black. And sometimes I would um, sketch in something a little thinner uh, thinner uh, marker pe uh, pen that I don't have with me right now. Um, so let's use this brown sharpie for now. So I'm just going to do a little quick center line. this model going over here and I'm gonna have her kind of rest her arm on this hip here and this hand will just relax against her uh, this thigh over here so we have this basic form that we can apply we can add clothing on top of um, so at this point let's zoom in a little bit um, you have to make a few decisions uh, as to what kind of clothing she's going to be wearing. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to give her a little, a little v-neck over on top. And a little jewelry. How about a little three-quarter sleeves? Maybe a little, maybe a little belt to bring this together. And maybe a little short skirt just over the knees in length. Let's see, we can go something about there. No, I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, with this, um, a few brush strokes, now we have um, uh, kind of described where, where the, um, 
skin's going to be and where the, uh, the clothing's going to be. So I'm going to start shading in the skin tone. <clears throat> For this, I'm using this um, Sharp uh, Copic brand ES and Edward 51 and it's labeled milky white actually but it works pretty well for skin tone uh, one thing I would recommend is to, before you um, do any uh, rendering is to clean or test your marker a little bit right outside the, the artwork and make, sometimes from previous um, sessions you might have a little bit of a leftover color uh, and sometimes that still shows up and you don't want that. You might not want that. So again, really, really quick. And as you probably notice, I'm using the chisel tip and not the brush tip. A lot of people like to use the brush tip. Um, I find it a little easier to just use a chisel tip. I, I feel like I have more control that way. And we can quickly add some shades. And for that, I'm going to use uh, number 13. There's another, uh, it's labeled E13, and it's actually light sun tan, so it's not too bad. Again, I'm using the chisel tip. Um, <clears throat> typically, we have light source come from the top left in that direction. So I'm going to send her uh, right side into shadow and a little bit of a shadow this way, a little this way and underside, underside and so on and so forth and let me see if I can zoom in a little more for detail shots and that skirt hemline will cast a little shadow along the, uh, the cylindrical form of the leg so you want to catch shadow that way. A little bit of a curve and on the inside for the knee bump right there and inside a little bit. And that's all you have to do. On this side, same thing. Again, you don't want to um, render too much. And one thing you should do is, as soon as you've put in the, um, the dark tones, you want to come back in with the light tones and blend it a little bit. Especially where you want um, the soft transitions to take place. go and I'm going to go with some a uh, little bright red color for summertime and I think I will give her um, let's see a little pattern so I'm gonna go with this kind of pattern And every time you're dealing with stripes, um, it's probably a good idea to change the direction of the stripes um, <coughs> at the seam. So, for example, when the uh, the um, the arms attach to the uh, the body, so you have a little more of an interesting, you know, direction and pattern going on. Uh, let's see, and. Also, let's pretend that there's a seam line at the waist there as well. And coming down, you can also flip the um, direction of the pattern. So, for example, I can now go in this direction. I'm going to turn this paper around a little bit.
you may have noticed that I uh, <coughs> have um, kind of uh, kept in mind it's kind of a central line that goes down the middle of the dress where these two patterns converge to and depending on what the body is doing that center line might shift but in this case it stays pretty much in the center so you know it's a little things to pay attention to um, I'm going to repeat this little red color into her uh, accessories maybe some little jewelry over here and maybe her earrings maybe some of the lips and of course the shoes And if we want to add a little bit of uh, shading on the dress, we could also do that. And we can actually use this um, E13, which we used for uh, the darker set of skin tone. And that'll work pretty well. So I like to see against this body right there. Uh, this whole arm can catch, catch a little shadow. So there you go, and I'm just going to give it a little eyebrow. And keep it very simple. Maybe add a few straps on her. On her shoes. Get a little bit of T-strap. And I'm going to come back and color those in as well. And there you go. So again, a look recap. Um, you want to do a few warm-up sketches and start with uh, just a very simple line work just to get some um, poses going, and you know, add some uh, volume with just a neutral gray tone, it's just like this. Um, and then when you're happy with a, a pose, and use that and expand it and do a nice um, full-on drawing and then add some clothing on top and maybe some texture, some colors, do a little shading and keep it quick, keep it spontaneous, keep it, you know, fresh and keep it in your style most importantly. Um, but, you know, of course, at the same time, keeping proportion in mind, uh, keeping how light and shadow works and, you know, just making things a little more interesting, adding accessories, jewelry, um, the type of print, um, you know, so on and so forth. So, it could be fun. So again, here's a look quick. I'm going to slide this down. Well, I hope you enjoyed it.